dear students today we are going to discuss about the most important uml diagram it's called as class diagram in the previous video we discussed uh, the basic information about uml diagrams and what's the two different uh, model of your uml model it's called as a behavioral diagram or it's a structural diagram and each category there are lot of diagrams it's available and in the today's sessions the most important are the structure diagram it's called as class diagram we will discuss in detail about class diagram in today's session and in that upcoming videos we will discuss one by one right now so as a class diagram it's a type of uml diagram it's represent the structure and the relationship of the classes in your system or your software applications and the next one it's visualize the visual representation of your classes attributes methods and the association between them it's the next most important thing what it mean we are creating the structure and that structure it visualize the classes and what kind of attributes you are going to use the methods what we are going to use for your class diagram and what kind of association you are going to use between the classes and here in the class diagram each class represented as a rectangular box with the three compartments so as a rectangular box with three compartments this is the basic uh, structure of our class diagram that first compartment it's called as class name or it displays the name of your class and the second compartment it's the list of attributes here we have to use it for the the second compartment and the third compartment or the bottom compartment it displays the methods or operations that the class can perform here that first one it's called as class name it's a followed by attributes and it's a followed by methods we have to use it in the class diagram coming to the next one when you are creating other relationship we are creating multiple classes for example this is class 1 this is class 2 and the next one it's a class 3 now we have to create the relationship between these uh, three classes what kind of relationship we are going to use either in the form of association or inheritance or relation dependency aggregation or composition so once you understand that what it mean by each relationship then you can easily create which one it's suitable for your project and which one we can uh that is implement uh, for your class diagram coming to that first one here as a association it's a general uh, that is a relationship between the two classes it shows uh, that how the classes are related but without specifying the nature of the relationship you are creating the relationship which is called as association so this is the simple uh, that is uh, line we can call it as the notation of our association or even we can call it as which is uh, called as direct association these are uh, two symbol or the notations we can use it for that association right so it's a simply derives that general relationship between the classes but without specifying the nature of the relationship right here the subset of your association it's either we can make it as aggregation or it's a composition for example so in that aggregation it's implies a relationship where the child can exist independently of the parent we are creating two classes that is the class a and b now here the a class it's called as parent and b class it's called as child now here the child class can exist without the parent class 
or without depend on the parent class even you delete that the parent class so it means that it's called as aggregation right so as a child can act independently it's called as aggregation and here that line with a hollow diamond shape we have to use it for the aggregation notation right coming to the composition it's just a opposite for the aggregation it implies a relationship where the child cannot exist independent of the parent what it mean that child class it's always depend on the parent class we cannot separate or we cannot uh, execute the child class without the parent class right so for example as here as a parent class name is house child class name is room right now rooms do not exist separate to a house right so this is the the concept of composition here it is represented with the filled diamond shape we have to use it for the composition notation and coming to the next one it's called uh, inheritance so as we know all that one class inherit from the another class either it can be a base class and derived class or super class subclass subclass here each uh, that parent class it derives or it inherits some kind of properties from the base class to derived class it's called as inheritance right so it is represented by an arrow pointing from a derived class to a base class this is the next most important thing you are pointing that uh, this is the symbol that is uh, uh, it's represented for the inheritance or we can call it as one more word which is called as generalization here which place we have to use a uh, base class and which place you got to point the derived class so always that arrow pointing from the derived class for example my parent class is a right here my derived class is b the arrow mark pointing from the derived class to the parent class it's important information you have to remember when you use the notation right in case if you change that symbol likewise the entire uh, the diagram it may be goes wrong what it mean b is act as a parent class now a is act as a child class so the direction of your symbol is very very important and that notation as well as the arrow mark it's uh, defines that which class is parent which class is child right and coming to the next one which is called as a dependency even the word itself you can understand what it mean by dependency right so it indicates that one class depend on another class or uses its services it's represented by a dashed line with an arrow pointing from the dependent class to the class it depends on the same way what i said for the inheritance that symbol or the notation it's only differ but the direction is same as it is for the inheritance right so the dependent class it's a pointing from the dependent and it's a point to the depends on or which class it's a depends on right coming to the next one it's called as a realization or implementation it's uh, like a that is a relationship between two model elements in which one model element it's a realize or executes the behavior with other model what it mean by a realization that one model element it executes the behavior of the another one it's called as realization right i will explain clearly in the practical session how we are going to use each relationship into the class diagram right finally apart from this information we have to concentrate on two more important uh, that is information which is called as visibility modifier and the next one it's called as multiplicity so as a visibility modifier it's called as either private public or protector here the plus symbol it's used for public minus symbol is used for private and the hash symbol is used for protected mode right you have to uh, use 
for any attributes or methods either it is act as a private or public or protective right and the multiplicity to specify the number of instances related to a relationship right so either it is one to one one to many many to one and many to many when we are creating multiple classes you have to represent the multiplicity of your class right and coming to that conclusion so as a class diagram serves as an essential tool in a software development for visualizing the static structure of the system so it is a static diagram it visualizing the static structure of your system understanding the class relationship and facilitating the communication among the stakeholders designers and developers right so they provide the blueprint for designing implementing documenting the software system you are creating a class diagram so it's like a blueprint of your project so when you did some mistake in your class diagram definitely it will be reflected in that implementation or in the development team right so you have to be always very conscious when you are drawing your uml model when you are drawing your especially for the class diagram right so this is the blueprint it means that so what kind of classes you are going to use how many classes you are going to create for your uh, project and what kind of attributes you are going to use that uh, the methods it reflects the operation of your class and what kind of relationship between the classes so this is the very very most essential informations which we have to be very clear before draw the diagram right and here just i show you that one of the simple example uh, of our class diagram for the concept of student management system so this diagram it's drawn in the uh, star uml software in the next video i will show you how to draw the same diagram in that software right here as i said already right as a class diagram it's a rectangular box with the three compartment so three compartment this is the first compartment this is the second one this is the third one so first compartment it's a class name second compartment it's a list of attributes it's a followed by the data type it's present here and the third compartment it's the list of methods or even we can call it as the, uh, the operation of your class right and the symbol either plus minus a hash symbol it's called as uh, that access modifier either it's a private public or productive and to differentiate that uh, attributes and data type we have to use the colon in the middle right here there are four classes i have created that first one it's a student class a second one it's the student mocks and the next one it's a student placement the last one it's a student sports right here three attributes that is a subject one two three uh, and it's a followed by three operations i perform to add the subject update the subject delete the subject and for the placement it's a four attributes and three uh, methods here also for the sports uh, two attributes followed by three uh, methods right here so once you created the classes you have to create the relationship between the classes right so this is the next most important thing so there are three different relationship i used here that first one it's aggregation second one it's association third one it's a generalization even you can use the remaining association or uh, it's a uh, depends upon your situation right coming to that aggregation here uh, that is uh, diamond uh, hollow diamond shape it's represented as a aggregation and direct without any uh, arrow mark or even we can use uh, that uh, the arrow mark symbol for that association and for the generalization or inheritance I, as i said right so from the derived class to base class you have to point the arrow mark should be point from the derived class to base class right and the next one it's the multiplicity of your class either one to many so here one student can have multiple subjects or many mocks and the next one it's a one student have one placement and the next one it's a one student can uh, register or can play many games that's a one to many relationship right so this is the simple uh, that is a class diagram and even you can uh, think about your own uh, topic and how to draw the class diagram irrespective of your 
class name and followed by attributes uh, then it's a list of methods right i hope this video is uh, helpful to know uh, that uh, the first class diagram still if you have any doubts you can post it in that comment window and in the next video i will uh, discuss about the practical aspect of your class diagram in that star uml and we will discuss one by one in that upcoming videos right thanks for watching thank you all